After you've captured your sources, and once you've begun to organize them, the next step is annotation. And when I say annotation, I mean taking the information in those sources and beginning to interpret it and craft it in a way that you can use it in your own projects. In this first annotation video, we're going to look at how you can add notes to Zotero items, and then we'll look at adding website snapshots and website links, and then we'll end with cross-references. The first thing we're going to look at in this video is how you can add child items to the items you've added to your Zotero library. And when I say child items, I'm referring specifically to notes, to attachments, and to cross-references. Let's start with notes. Now you can see I have the Zotero window open to full window view. I'm going to select one of the articles we found. And you remember that Zotero items have two parts. The first is the parent item where you have all the metadata for an item, that is to say, the title, the author, the type of uh, item it is, the, in this case, journal, and then you also have child items. In the case of this article, we have the actual PDF. And you'll remember from a previous video that we used this action here, rename file from parent metadata, to make sure that the PDF file name has the author's name, the year of publication, and the first part of the title of the article. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I am have selected the parent item, and then I'm going to go to this button here, which is the New Note button. I'm going to click on the triangle, and I'm going to go to Add a Child Note. You'll notice on the right pane that a text editor has opened up. And in this text editing window, you can add any notes that you want. Now before we look at how you can edit text in this window, I just want to point out that you can either write things with the text editing window um, built in here to the Zotero window, or if you click on edit in a separate window, it will open it in a separate window, and you can edit it there. This is a rich text format editor. And what does that mean? Well first let's just take a quick note so we have something to work with. So when I say rich text editor, that means that you can make things bold, you can have them in italics, you can have them underlined. The other important options you have here are uh, changing the color of the lettering. We can make this particular word red. You can also highlight things. You can turn them into block quotes. If you're working in Arabic, you can change the alignment from left to right to right to left. If I go to the second row of buttons, you can also change the formatting of the text to reflect uh, sections and subsections. So for example, if I highlight summary, instead of having it in paragraph, I could have it in heading one. And then I could add my detailed notes below it. So it's an easy way to distinguish between the sections of your notes. Here we have paragraph alignment, align left, align center, align right. You can also create um, bulleted lists, numbered lists. You can change the indenting. And if you like working in web pages, you can even export this in HTML. The last thing I want to show you about the notes editor is if I go down to the bottom of this window, you can see that it tells me what the parent item is here that the note is associated with. I can also um, add my own set of tags just for these notes, and I can also add related items. And related items is the same as cross-referencing, but for notes. And we'll look at cross-referencing a little bit later in this video. To summarize, using the child note option is a good way to take notes on a particular article or item and make sure they stay with that item. If I go to the new note button, you can also see that I have the option to make a standalone note. And all that means is that this note is not associated with any other item. It's not a child item, it exists on its own. 
I recommend you limit your use of standalone notes because one of the great advantages of Zotero is having your notes directly connected to the items that they refer to. And as soon as you have them floating around by themselves, things tend to get a little unorganized. So I'm actually going to delete that. And I'll close this up here. And that's it for notes. The second kind of child item that you can add to parent items are these attachments. So if I click on the at Add Attachment button, I have several options, and I'll go through them one by one. The first is Attach Snapshot of a Current Page. And so if you are on a web page and you want to associate it with an item, you simply highlight the item and click on Attach Snapshot of Current Page. Next, we have Attach Link to Current Page. Now the difference between attaching a snapshot of a current page and attaching a link of a current page is that one gives you a archive version of the whole website and the other one just gives you the web address. My advice is that when you're choosing between attaching a snapshot and attaching a link, you should always attach a snapshot because you never know a, web a website might disappear and so it's always good to have a copy in your own personal archive. But if you just want to attach a link, this is how you would do it. Next, we have Attach Link to a URL. And if I click here, you can see that I have the option to copy and paste a URL address directly into this bar here, and it will add that link to Zotero. I'm going to cancel that, open this up here again. And this is the same as Attach Link to Current Page, except that it's when you're not on a current page, but you have the web address available. Up next, we have Attach Stored Copy of a File. And this comes in handy when you have a PDF, say, somewhere on your computer, but not in your Zotero library. If you already have the metadata for that PDF stored in a parent item, you can simply click here and add the file itself to your library. Finally, we have Attach Link to File. And this is similar to attached stored copy of file with one important exception. When you click on attach stored copy of file, it moves the file itself to your Zotero library. When you click on attach link to file, it doesn't move the file. Rather, it just tells Zotero where it can find that file elsewhere on your computer. Much like with the difference between attach snapshot and attach link, I recommend that you always go for attach a stored copy of the file. And that way you make sure that everything is one in one place. If you click on attach link to file and you have that file stored somewhere else on your computer, you might rearrange the file structure on your computer, you might delete a folder, and then all of a sudden you've lost that PDF. But if it's here, you know that it's safe and sound in your Zotero library. And those are the five options for adding child attachments to parent items in your library. The last kind of child attachment that I want to go over are cross-references. Now to do that, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to click on Gender and the Metaphorics of Translation. And then I'm going to go over here to the Information pane and click Related. Now, related simply means what items in your library are related to this item. And if there's a particular item you want to connect to this item, all you do is click Add, and that will open up this box. Now, once you're in here, you can search your entire library, either by using the simple search bar here or by hunting for it using the Collections pane. In this case, let's say I'm working on a paper in gender, on gender. And so the item that I want to associate here is translating gender. So I'm going to select it and then click OK. And you can see that Zotero has added it as a related item. Just to show you a little more clearly how that works, I'm going to highlight gender and the metaphysics of translation. And then I'm going to go over here to the related link for translating gender, and I'm going to click on it. And you'll see that all of a sudden, Zotero takes me right to the entry for translating gender. And I can see in the info pane that it's also connected translating gender to gender in the metaphorics of translation. 
so I can click back and forth between these two quickly. Now this isn't really a big deal when I'm dealing with a dozen sources, but you can imagine it with I'm dealing with a library of 50, 100, 200 sources, this kind of cross-referencing can be very useful. Imagine, for instance, that you're working with a source text, a novel for instance. What you could do is all of the secondary items that mention that novel, you could cross-reference them with that novel so that when you select the novel, you can quickly see which of your items mention it. And that's it for child attachments. Just to quickly summarize, you can add notes, you can add other attachments like snapshots of websites, links to websites, files, or links to files, or you can add cross-references here in the related section of the information pane.